our need to borrow and in fact transform some of the principles or tenets of green design uh, from the building question, buildings and, and the, the physicality of buildings to the larger domain of infrastructure, I think is um, a, an emergent direction uh, that brings together architects, scientists, engineers uh, with landscape architects on this larger question of how do we harmonize uh, natural resources with built with the built environment. And I think that what's exciting about this um, movement towards uh, greening our infrastructure, and I, I don't mean green infrastructure, which is really a term for the um, ecological services that trees and planted areas provide. The green infrastructure is, the distinction is that taking our current mechanisms for um, uh, treating, filtering water, uh, creating energy and mobility among our citizens, we have to rethink some very basic questions. And I think there are four premises that I'm interested in addressing. The first is, as we think of infrastructures, can we begin to think of them not as sort of separate components um, that are unrelated, but that when we build one, we're building one that has multiple functions and uh, becomes, it, we, we try to integrate and not segregate those infrastructures uh, for concerns of uh, resource efficiency, uh, labor efficiency, and so on. And um, I can think of some examples um, of um, uh, a wonderful project that may or may not be built in the city of, uh, in uh, the Canary Islands, which is a solar desalination plant uh, comprised of solar panels that forms the backdrop for a civic amphitheater. That's an example of multi-use. I can think of many others. The second condition really is uh, to move towards a low or no carbon infrastructure by harnessing natural forces, processes, wherever possible. The third dimension really addresses, in our building of infrastructure, can we create components that work well with the community in which they're housed, they're, where, whereby there's a, a, a give and take, um, and we can literally beneficially embed the infrastructure in, in that locale. Um, another dimension is, um, I'm gonna have to hesitate here for a second. Um, another, um, another dimension uh, is to address climate and climate change. Um, and uh, how do we build infrastructures that are resilient is a, is a good word, adaptive, um, and that can withstand some of the stresses, anticipate and withstand some of the stresses of climate change. Uh, in our uh, transportation systems, we don't, we have to think about where we build them in relation to um, uh, rising sea levels, et cetera. Um, so an, an, another component, of course, in infrastructure design is to uh, take advantage of natural processes um, and to think of new ways of, for example, harnessing solar energy in the city. Can we design buildings in such a way um, as to capture and utilize passive energy? And what are the implications of that in terms of planning guidelines uh, is one example. Um, we're learning, we're developing new technologies where, such as a heliostat, which receives solar energy and reflects it somewhere else. And can we begin to develop mechanisms in cities where solar energy um, or light illumination um, can be harvested for beneficial use somewhere else where it's not receiving it. So those are a couple of other examples.